do the pores of your skin actually open and close? Now this is a really, really good question. Let's explore the world of pores. More and more people are finding that the appearance of their pores are a little bit of a troublesome part of their skin's appearance. And one of the reasons that is that although it's relatively easy to treat, unless you know why your pores are apparent and how to fix it, they can seem to get bigger and more noticeable. And this can be frustrating as we all seem to be striving for beautiful, clear, wonderful skin. So let's revisit our skin diagram. Now remember, this is downloadable in the picture section of KJ's NutriChain on Facebook. Now here you'll see the orange sebaceous gland or the oil factory and it's attached to the hair follicle. Now the oil is produced there or sebum and it then travels up the tube that runs alongside the hair follicle to the opening on the surface of the skin and that's what we call a pore. Now these pores are open-ended straws that allow the oil or the sebum to leave the body and this creates the natural barrier on the surface of the skin called the natural acid mantle. Now you remember that, we spoke about that in another gold mail, the pH of your skin. So this natural acid mantle sits at a pH of about 4.5 to 5.5 and protects your skin against the harmful aggressors in the environment such as pollution, smoke and bacteria. And how it protects is that these aggressors are usually alkaline in nature and your skin has this natural acid mantle that is acidic in nature. Now this acid neutralizes the nasties and it keeps your skin wonderful and protected. Okay, so that's the lowdown on the basic pore. So let's have a look at some myths and some facts about them. Okay, here's a myth that your pores can open and close. No, they can't. Pores do not have muscles and muscles are what causes movement. Therefore, they can't open and shut. So when they say things like steam can open your pores, they can't. But I'll explain something about steam a little bit later on. And when they see things like cold water can snap them shut again, uh, nope, that can't happen either. Now having said that, your pore size can certainly appear to change size and it is here that we'll explore a little more. Okay, so here are some pores. Now take a look at the one that's in the circle. It looks like a little indent and sometimes it's these little indents that can become more apparent. There are a few factors for this. All right, one of them is hormones. So certainly we know when kids are going through those teenage years, hormones are running right, more oil is created in the skin and it's that oil or the oily skin that can really make your pores seem a lot more apparent. So what actually happens is the oil mixes with, now you know this, the cornflakes. This has a direct impact on our pore size. Okay, the oil and the cornflakes mix and this can cause a plug at the opening of the pores making them appear larger. Let's have a look at that a little bit more closely. Now here's a picture of a normal, happy, healthy sized pore and it is doing what it is meant to be doing. It's letting out the sebum that is produced lower down in the sebaceous gland. Nice. Now what happens as we know is that not only around the surface of your skin but also in the lining of the hair follicle shaft the sebum uses to reach the surface of the skin sometimes this oil mixes with these dead skin cells or these corn flakes and they cause a blockage or a plug at the opening of the pore hmm. So what happens then, you might ask? Well, just because there's a plug, that doesn't stop the production of oil underneath because the sebaceous gland is doing what all good sebaceous glands should do. It makes more oil. And so the oil is made, travels up the shaft, whoops, can't get out because there's a plug. So it starts to build up. And then more oil joins in and builds up even more. And it builds up even more. In fact, the pressure is building. So you can see how this pushes the plug from below, making it bigger due to the pressure under Underneath, and it keeps getting bigger. Now, as you can see, that due to this plug that is stopping the natural release of the oil, the plug has doubled or tripled its size as it was when it was an open pore. So the oil or the sebum plus cornflakes equals blocked pores, which equals a buildup of oil pressure, and that means more visible pores. Ah, okay, so what about blackheads? What are they? Is that dirt getting into your pores? No. What a blackhead is, is the blocked pore oxidizing with the air and this turns the plug 
black. So it's exactly the same process as when you cut an apple, leave it too long, the oxygen turns it brown. So oil plus cornflakes plus oxygen, the plug turning black or becomes a blackhead. So what about acne? Well, amongst other causes, let's revisit our natural acid mantle. Remember, protecting your skin against bacterias. When we remove the mantle, these bacterias can go down into the pores and into the follicle. And now, when we get a plug, the bacteria is trapped in the follicle by the cornflake plug. And this bacteria can multiply, cause a pustule, creates inflammation. And then this pustule kind of bulges under the surface with this type of infected, aggravated pus showing on the pore surface and it's actually what we call pimples or acne. Now just as a side note one of the very reasons that many teenagers suffer worse acne than they ever should was that they had this oily skin due to primarily hormone changes. Now thinking that it was excess oil only that was the major culprit in this acne, well-meaning doctors and parents and friends suggested vigorous washing of the oily face with harsh soaps to get rid of this terrible acne causing oil and we know that harsh soaps soaps or actually general soaps have such a high alkaline value that it actually messes with our skin's natural acid mantle, therefore making our skin so more um, apparent to these aggressors, bacteria goes down into the pores, bingo, now we've got acne. And it's just such a negative cycle that keeps so many people, especially teenagers, suffering acne way longer than they need to. And always remember there's a huge difference between pimples and acne. Often your clients might ask what you recommend for their teenager who might have acne. I believe it's pretty important to ask the question, do they suffer from spots around their oily T-zone or is their condition a little more substantial? Because if we're talking general spots, forehead, chin, nose, sure, something like clear is perfect. If it's a little more substantial, I would actually ask them if they've seen an actual dermatologist dermatologist is 99% of acne is completely treatable and not only that if people have had acne and have got substantial scars that is about 90% treatable as well through a dermatologist. Gotta love those skin doctors. Okay, back to blackheads, whiteheads, pimples. Temptation is always to squeeze them for fear that they'll spoil a bit night out. But here it is, don't do it, please. As hard as it is, don't squeeze because you'll cause definite and unnecessary trauma to your skin. Just imagine someone giving you a huge pinch. You get a bruise and we know that's bleeding under the skin. And really, what's worse, a few little spots all these big bruises. Okay, now if you have to squeeze, please, no fingers. You'll just push and force more bacteria into the wound. So you actually get sterile um, pads, put it over and do it that way. But anyway, there's that. So the solution, of course, to enlarged pores and all the things we've spoken about and to unclog these pores that have the dead skin cells and to fix the enlarged pores because they're clogged and the oil is still being produced and to help unplug the oxidizing blackheads and what do we know fixes all of those things where cornflakes are concerned? Of course, exfoliation. And a combination routine of chemical and mechanical exfoliants is what we need to do to treat this. Nutramedics always comes up with the answers. So to help reduce enlarged pore size, start by having a shower. At the end, when you've been in the steam a little, it won't open your pores, but the steam gently helps to soften the debris of the plug. And then you use microdermabrasion or if you've got more sensitive skin, a complexion refiner, massage into the pore area. And then, for want of a better word, it sands away the plug, start to be able to release the buildup of pressure that's making your pores appear bigger. And the more we do this over time, the more buildup is released, and the more quickly your pore sizes will return to a more normal size. And to really effectively complete the routine, add the beautiful facial peel cream. That is just gorgeous with its 5% glycolic, and this will make sure that all the glue that holds the dead skin cells are taken away and the pathway for the oil to escape happens and it's wonderful. Always remember to use an oil-free makeup so we don't exacerbate the situation and you'll have happy, happy pores. Well, also remember, take your makeup off before you go to bed. Apart from the obvious issue, when you rub your face on the pillow, it can move particles of makeup into your pores and clog them even more. So there you have it, guys. 
happy skin, happy pores, happy you, thanks to Nutramedics. Okay, till next time, see you later.